Well, during the course of my duties there, uh, I uh, that uh, we had received uh, via diplomatic pouch from the American Embassy in Moscow. And uh, in this uh, diplomatic pouch, the document was there, was entitled uh, Grudge Blue Book 13, Project Grudge Blue Book 13. And the material that was in the document was uh, pretty incredible information. And essentially what it was was everything that the United States government knew about um, aliens and UFOs and recovered UFOs. Now this has the same name of the United States many years before been dealing with. Is this uh, carrying on from that, a same type of blue book thing? Uh, well, not specifically. Uh -huh. uh, there were three projects. Project Sign, Grudge, and then Project Grudge became Project Blue Book. And uh, this document was a combination of all of the information that they had gathered through Project Grudge and Project Blue Book. But it was material that had never been released publicly. Uh, and uh, was never going to be released publicly. This was an inter uh, an interagency document. Now, uh, you had never seen this type of thing before, even though I guess you had to have a security clearance of some sort to be there, right? Oh yeah, I had a very extremely high uh, security clearance, but I had never seen this kind of stuff before. In fact, at that point, I had absolutely no interest whatsoever in UFOs. Uh, my life basically centered around. Uh, uh, my family and, and the few hobbies that I had in my job. Well, essentially what we're talking about, Jerry, is in the report from photographs of captured aliens, uh, color and black and white photographs. There was photographs of uh, autopsies that were being performed on aliens, uh, uh, photographs of rec recovered uh, craft, uh, material which dealt with human mutilations, uh, as a result of UFO contact. Now, I, I hadn't heard that part. I've heard about cattle mutilations and things like that, but, but they, they, you know, you all, all the stories you hear about the contact with vegan beings, it always seems to be safe, but uh, that's not the case, huh? No, it's not, and as time goes by, we've discovered that uh, uh, the abductions that have been taking place are, are not as friendly as we had uh, at first thought they might have been, based on... Uh, a lot of uh, information that had been passed along by you know, countless people. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it appears that uh, the majority of the contacts are uh, anything but friendly. Oh, see, I haven't heard, heard a lot about that, so you need to maybe throw some of the details in. Are we talking about the little gray guys? Uh, yeah, as a matter of fact, we are. We're talking about the little gray guys in a combination of several different classifications of aliens. What what are the classifications are? Most of our listeners probably have seen the pictures of the gray short beings with well, the ball hair and the big eyes that just seem to pierce right through you. Well, the uh, the short little gray guys are the most common, but we also uh, have classification of what they've referred to in the past as uh, as reds or red-headed humanoid aliens that resemble humans very closely or uh, blonde aliens. There are also uh, several... When you say red and blonde, excuse me, Bill, I just have to ask you this. So when you say red and blonde, are they, are, are these, these red and blondes, are they more humanoid? Yeah, very much so. In fact, they're, uh, they're, they look extremely human uh, in their appearance. From what and, and immediately when you said the reds, I, I thought of the Vikings and those type of uh, invaders. Would you compare the reds to that type of... Uh, in actuality, the uh, many contactees have described them as as almost Nordic in appearance. That's amazing. And uh, say, how about the behavior? Are, are, are the reds uh, more aggressive or less aggressive than the grays? Uh, well, the the reds seem to be more aggressive than uh, than the grays, uh, but also the grays seem to, uh, from the information we've been able to gather together over the years. Uh, seem to uh, be subservient to the Reds. Uh, and in many cases, the two have, have, have uh, been uh, seen together, where, and, and the Red seems to be supervising uh, uh, the, the gray aliens. That's surprising. I, I'd always figured the grays were the supreme beings, all brain and mental telepathy. And, but you're saying the more human characteristic uh, aliens seem to be in charge. Uh, it would appear to be that way, yeah. 
but also you have to bear in mind that there are different types of uh, uh, majority of uh, contact uh, uh, reports. Uh, the grades do seem to be the ones that are doing the majority of the uh, abduction. Over the years, there's been a lot of evidence that indicates that there, there are uh, various different places where they come from. Technology. Uh, how, they, how did we capture them? They have accidents or crashes or something? Or well, apparently, well, apparently the majority of the recoveries uh, uh, were brought about because of either uh, crashes or uh, what seemed to be electrical interference of some type or another. Most of the recoveries took place during uh, electrical type storms. You would think with uh, space and time technology or, like they must have had to go light years, uh, uh, that they would have uh, based on uh, a lot of uh, information that had been passed along by you know, countless people. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it appears that uh, the majority of the contacts or uh, anything. 